just uh, give a little um, intro here to, to let everybody know, you know, what we're doing. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Rachel Gallagher. Uh, I am the deputy editor at Gray Magazine. Um, as some of you m might know, last year we launched a, a virtual design expo, kind of, a, you know, as the pandemic started as a way to help the design community stay, you know, connected and inspired kind of during uncertain times. Um, and we are, you know, now coming out of that, thankfully, um, but we are, you know, hoping to still help keep the design community connected. And, um, you know, we're proud to continue our efforts with year round programming, um, including showroom tours, new product launches, and, um, you know, the IG live talks like we're doing today. Um, so today uh, we have uh, architect uh, Natalie Tuliak, principal at Vancouver based uh, award winning Michael Green Architecture. Uh, one of Natalie's projects, a set of mass timber buildings for Oregon State University's Forest Science Complex is featured in the current issue. So we thought it would be um, great to, uh, you know, catch up with her and, and chat a little bit about that project and, and some of her other, other things. Seems like you have some exciting things coming up as well. Um, so with an education in both architecture and engineering, Natalie brings an approach to design that is rooted in material logic. Uh, combined with an emphasis on cross-team collaboration, she's driven towards solutions that marry structure, systems, manufacturing, and architecture. Natalie is passionate about the potential to foster community and enhance our connection to nature through design. Most evident in the uh, Governor General award-winning Ronald McDonald House, BC, and uh, an upcoming project in Sweden. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I, I love this idea of kind of staying connected amongst the industry ways and you know we've kind of discovered those together throughout the past year so it's great to be here yeah yeah no it's um it's wonderful you know to especially connect with you know people who you aren't in the same city as and um it's it's kind of funny how easy it is um i feel like before the pandemic like we knew it existed but um you know all of a sudden when we could no longer gather in person it was like oh this thing right. this is amazing why aren't we doing this more yeah. All these have in our toolkit, yeah, for sure. Exactly, exactly. Well, um, I'd love to go ahead and, and kind of jump in here. Um, as I mentioned, one of your projects um, is two buildings for Oregon State University's Forest Science Complex. Um, for those, you know, who haven't seen the story or, or you know, been able to pick up the issue, can you um, talk about this project and, and why it's an important one for you? Absolutely. Uh, so the project itself is located in Corvallis, Oregon. Uh, so it's at the College of Forestry um, at Oregon State University. And uh, the, the forest science complex really is composed of two uh, new buildings uh, combined with an existing lab building on a campus uh, knit together by landscape, by local um, kind of uh, forest, uh, forest related landscapes connected to the college. And the new buildings really offered an opportunity to provide new academic classroom, lab, office spaces, as well as this really large um, kind of testing facility that allows for one-to-one -one structure to be tested structurally um, with a really large concrete sheer wall or strong wall. Um, yeah, so for us, it was such a great opportunity. So many of our core in this partnership and in this collaboration. And three of those, those main kind of values are connection to nature, uh, collaboration, and in this case, collaboration both with the college in terms of designing the building through that process with the, the departments and the, the kind of local community, as well as designing for collaboration. So the building is really thought of as this heart for bringing together uh, local industry, academia, and community together to kind of collaborate, ideate, uh, discuss the future of our, um, kind of our forest, uh, forest, forestry, forest management, and um, kind of all that exciting things that lie within that. So um, it kind of was all within this um, uh, kind of package of opportunity to align with uh, this kind of uh, this uh, partners down in uh, the College of Forestry. And what a great opportunity. I mean, the fact that it is the College of Forestry, which <laughs> is obviously, you know, something that the firm is, you know, with, with the mass timber and, and all of that. Um, so what an incredible opportunity to help design for the future and the future who will be designing. Like, <laughs> it's kind of like a meta situation there. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's kind of designing with that community and uh, 
those who are studying the kind of very, um, the very technology and innovations that are realized within the building. And so um, a big part of the college is the wood science engineering. And so the realization of two different forms, um, two different built forms of pushing an academic building into mass timber, which is really kind of an emerging field. Um, and uh, in addition, not only the, for, the forest science, so the, the wood, the kind of the wood structure, but also thinking about the whole building systems and how it sits within this natural landscape. There was a concept early on about, um, could you receive a course credit just by walking up to the building? So thinking about all the different landscape elements that you encounter, how do, how do you learn from that? How can really even just someone walking by casually versus somebody kind of coming every day, mm -hmm. how can be a source of that, be a teacher itself. Oh, interesting, interesting. That's that's great. Um, so as I kind of, you know, mentioned, and I think a lot of people, especially in the design industry, know Michael Green Architecture, you know, is known for pioneering this use of and working with mass timber, sustainability. Um, so I'm curious for you personally, what kind of, you know, drew you to want to, uh, you know, go to a firm that, that placed a premium on sustainability and new technologies? And um, just for, you know, some people who maybe don't know, I know, you know, the, the words mass timber, it's thrown around a lot, um, but can you, is there kind of like a layman's way that you can, uh, can explain that for people who might not be familiar? Absolutely. Mass timber is a, a word that captures all, a number of different product types that are all, um, kind of what they have in mind is large uh, format, either panels or um, things like beams and columns um, that you'll see um, throughout uh, kind of our, our cities and, and buildings um, that are formed with smaller pieces of wood kind of glued together, formed together through pressure and, and create these larger panels that then offer opportunity to create lots of different building types from mm -hmm. academic community buildings, housing. Um, we're seeing now up to, you can build up to 18 stories in um, in the States as well as 12 stories in Canada. And those are, are kind of just the tip of the iceberg. Um, we're able to now work with different jurisdictions and base it on the science of how can we really grow our buildings and base that in the science of how we, how we kind of design those uh, within the industry. Great. So then for you, you know, this is a, a, a kind of a passion. I mean, have you always like, you know, since you were in school been interested in, in this kind of uh, area of industry? Absolutely. Um, so for me, um, I came from a background actually in engineering. I studied engineering prior to architecture. Um, and that, I think, impacted me in a couple of different ways. Um, one, the material aspect of, of buildings, architecture, or built environment is something that I um, became passionate about early in my career, thinking about um, really uh, looking to the very elements that we um, create our buildings with for inspiration. And, and to do so, not only to kind of, um, kind of find that logic, find that real kind of balance that we can create when we truly understand materials, but also when we really value something, when it's kind of placed in a in kind of considered um, place in a position of importance, we also then value that material more. So we think about um, that's when we value um, our, our, our material objects, we maintain them all over time. We kind of live in them for centuries. And right. that also is that biggest form of sustainability is building buildings that will endure, that will, and what we're finding now during the pandemic is all the different ways that we can use our spaces um, and, and totally. part of that sustainability. And so there, on the one hand, for me, the engineering kind of uh, unlocked that how could structure really be expressed as part of that experience, thinking about the structure, all the things that hold the building up are the, the majority of the volume of material going into it. And then in addition, um, on the, from the operations side, thinking about uh, you know, our buildings as ecosystems, how do they breathe? How do they let light in? How can they frame spaces and create environments that make us kind of connect and feel a kind of a sense of well-being and so I, I think those two um, potentials and the ability for design uh, to impact um, overall the overall kind of sustainability approach um, within our industry we know buildings um, and the construction industry results in 40 percent of our greenhouse gases globally so thinking about different ways that we can move that dial even a little bit and trigger ripple effects that can then change ultimately change that impact, right? 
Right, right. That's interesting. I feel like this kind of idea, I, I keep, I'm running into this more and more just as I, you know, talk to architects and designers about kind of living with buildings and homes other than just living in them, you know, I feel like for so long, it was like, oh, well, we create these kind of like boxes, and then you fill them with stuff, and that's it, and you tear it down, and you know, when it's out of style. But um, I, I think that is kind of, you know, the future of where things are going is that people are realizing, well, no, if you take care of these things, that in itself, you know, is a huge move for sustainability. And, um, you know, if you're paying attention, like you said, to things like, you know, light and heat and, you know, all these things, I mean, and create these spaces that you want to take care of, then that's a, you know, a win, win, win. <laughs> and when those spaces also connect, um, when we think about um, the emerging ability to kind of enhance and create connections to physical nature in our cities, mm -hmm. um, Kind of this kind of uh, it's a real hardness I think throughout a lot of our cities but the infusion of more natural elements of um, thinking about um, I feel like the pandemic has kind of triggered this consideration of local really how we spend our time within our immediate context as well as things like this this kind of global reach in terms of um, ideas and sharing and whatnot and when we think about our, our kind of I love that idea of kind of living and kind of enhancing our buildings through that kind of um, relationship really and then introducing more and more natural elements within and green space into that, it just enhances that kind of connection, I think. Absolutely. I know it's funny during the pandemic, I, you know, I like pretty much everyone work from home, um, but I just was, you know, spending so much time. I, I filled my apartment, you can't see right now, but with plants <laughs> and yeah. it totally changed the space and like, uh, this is, I probably shouldn't do this, but like I talk to them in the morning and, you know, like, it's like, oh, I have these living things and it like really enhanced my, my place. So I, I get that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, even they've done studies on just the act of gardening. I think it's just even that really direct connection with things that are evolving and changing in these cycles, but in a really balanced way, it, it, it impacts and kind of reduces stress levels and creates a real sense of well-being just from like an hour of gardening every day. And it's something that I, I totally agree through the through this kind of time that we've had to spend um, within our spaces and really think about what are those little tweaks that actually do make a big difference. Um, yeah. So in the um, article, you know, about the uh, forest science, uh, sciences complex, you said something that, that really struck me and I, I found interesting. You mentioned that you hope that someday that we would be able to trace, um, you know, where the materials from our, our, that our buildings came from, kind of like how, you know, you can, people like you go to a fancy restaurant and they're like oh this carrot was grown on this farm and this chicken came from here um and um yeah can you talk to me a little bit tell a little bit more about this yeah i think that's yeah the, the kind of food um analogy is quite um relevant there and i think even just like you mentioned it's often right now it's actually more fancier restaurants but the 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 um, movement towards that notion of um, of thinking local, thinking about understanding the path and the not just the the source, but also all the different people that are involved in getting getting mm -hmm. that kind of piece. What are the you know how, how can we strengthen that um, and enhance our kind of experience? And I think buildings are are you know throughout the course of 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 how our physical infrastructure has been built, there's been different. Um, kind of uh, factors in terms of what access to materials where we've had to use more local materials where in the end um, and we see the potential of that for how that then shapes an architecture and a design directly rooted to that place and if we think about that holistically where we have um, an entire building where each piece um, has that connection just imagine um, you know the layers of experience the layers of kind of just even internal story stories that one would have kind of living within that context and kind of connection, you know, sitting next to a stone element where you know, you know where it came from, you know who, um, who kind of designed and, and crafted that um, and, and just how then that impacts its value and connection over time. I'm almost picturing like a little plaque on buildings, like, you know, the, this wood came from this forest or... <laughs> Absolutely. And I think now a lot of the buildings we work on now, we do life cycle analysis. So that's to measure how much energy is going into the building to um, to create the, all the kind of physical, um, all the different parts, pieces, but also the energy that goes into running it. And so we're getting as an industry and through, throughout the different kind of 
variety of ways that we ha can track products, we're kind of moving towards a world where we can imagine doing that to really understanding where each piece is coming from. And it's kind of this balance of real, like, again, that real kind of local aspect with this global reach and, and learning and um, sharing ideas with one another and how, how that's working, what the impacts are, you know, um, and then again, tying it back with life cycle analysis is how much carbon really goes into building our buildings. And a big part of that is transportation. So thinking about where things are coming from. So oh, right wow. away, when we grow our materials, like, like timber, other kind of natural fibers, that's, you know, we're using the sun to grow our cities. And so there's an, uh, just a natural element of sustainability within that. And then when we think about the system and limiting transportation, thinking creatively about our, our kind of sourcing and um, kind of uh, access to these materials, it's just one more opportunity to kind of, again, shift the way that the kind of model of how we build. Yeah, that's great. Uh, well, obviously, sustainability, you know, is a huge buzzword right now. You know, going green, being sustainable. Um, you know, you kind of see a lot of a lot of companies in every industry kind of you know using that now. Um, but it almost you know kind of feels like it loses its meaning. Not that I'm saying you know that that sustainability isn't important, but it's just like kind of an oversaturation. So, like you know, for you, what what is like a truly sustainable project look like, and and what kind of what does that mean in the context of your work? Yeah, you know, it's a great question, and I think. Um... What it's you know it's so fantastic that the word is is becoming uh, you know and so it forces us to create other ways and other kind of vocabulary to have these discussions but I mean I think big picture true sustainability is blurring the lines between the built and natural environment and really creating a symbiotic relationship between the two mm. appreciating the fact that we are part of big a bigger system many kind of inter interlinked systems and what is our part in that and how um, can we create a balanced relationship? And I think, like I talked about with materials, operational energy, these are big, big, big questions that we're tackling. And at a building level for right now, in terms of creating something that really will um, kind of sustain, and I think there's an element of being a, a light touch. So how much, um, how can we uh, lower that footprint as much as we can? But now we're approaching uh, we can achieve net zero both in operational carbon and in, in um, embodied carbon. Um, and really, though, I think right now, sustainability in buildings is actually reaching farther. We know we need to not just back to zero, but we need to even, you know, move towards cyclical um, economy to uh, regenerative design. How can we actually start to kind of improve, not just sustain, because we've already done so much damage. So I think there's the big picture goal. And then at a project level, let's be ambitious. Let's work together and share ideas and see how can we do this. And then again, we'll come right back to that big picture um, and think about how we can really kind of move the dial. That makes sense. Um, so then what, uh, what, what kind of excites you about um, the architecture industry today and kind of I mean, where do you hope to see things, you know, in 10, 20, 30 years? I feel like, you know, that we're always hearing, um, you know, we're at a critical, critical point, critical point, you know, as far as global warming and um, population and all of these things. And it, it can be kind of scary almost, you know, um, or alarmist. But I, I think that there are there is hope. And, and you know, um, so I'm curious as somebody who works, you know, in the built environment, um, what do you what do you hope to see in the future? Absolutely. I, you know, I really hope to see um, a kind of a deepening connection between our cities and nature and within our cities, designing buildings and uh, kind of neighborhoods to foster community. I think connection to nature community are at the heart of um, kind of what I would love our future cities to look like. And, I, you know, I think that um, that um, that element really uh, is is the opportunity there is just so rich to kind of foster those connections. And, you know, we, we see um, uh, when we look at that at that network, I think what the pandemic has really shown us is that when, when we think about what our building stock looks like, let's think about creating something that's adaptable and flexible. So something that we know now the way we're working is changing, the way we're living is changing. Hopefully it can start something where we're, we're living more communally, we're able to share more. I think the way that transportation works is gonna change a lot. You know, that we know that um, the kind of individual car is going to be something of the past, hopefully sooner than later. Um, yeah. 
there's just so many efficiencies to sharing things like that and even um, our tools and appliances, that kind of thing. Um, and so I think that, that we know that adaptability, flexibility is, is valuable. We, we don't know exactly what our kind of our, our future models of economy and all that are going to look like, but we do know that we can create spaces that will adapt. And, um, and with that, we also know, and I, what I hope to see too, is that not, that actually will create more variety and more wonder and kind of magic infused into our cities. So it's not just about, you know, housing, 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 office. It's actually kind of, there's a network of spaces that support what we need um, to live, what we need to kind of, uh, what we can share within that as well. Yeah, that's, I love that. I feel like the um, pandemic really kind of showed us that humans, you know, are not meant to be isolated in these little bubbles and we need community. And um, I think that, you know, the importance of that really, it's, I, th I almost think sometimes we took it for granted, you know, like being able to just go out and hang out with friends or go to the office and be around other people. And then all of a sudden when that was taken away, it almost was like a gift because it made us realize like, whoa, like this is important and we need to do what we can to strengthen that. So mm -hmm. definitely. Great. So I'd love to um, wrap up here with um, my, my last question. I'm curious, what are you working on now? What projects are you excited about? Um, what's on, on the docket? Um, you mentioned the project in Sweden. So we're um, just kind of going into construction on this uh, large uh, multi-activity house, which is basically a big community uh, community center in Northern Sweden. Um, we've got a few uh, new collaborations starting locally with, um, uh, it's an alliance we're forming with a local firm called LTA and it's uh, First Nations projects, one's a healing center, uh, a youth center as well. Um, so looking to kind of create these um, kind of opportunities locally um, to collaborate. Um, as well as what we're finding with the new codes, uh, the new building codes uh, throughout North America, uh, the opportunity for um, kind of community focused, affordable, um, taller timber buildings for housing and for, for kind of mixed use are just continue to emerge. It's just so exciting to see that um, across, the, across the continent. That's fantastic. Well, it sounds like you, uh, you're gonna keep busy for, for the summer and the rest of the year, which is really exciting. Um, well, thank you so much, Natalie, for joining us. It was really lovely to chat. Um, and, you know, hopefully the border will open soon and we'll, we'll be able to, to meet in person sometime. Yeah. Sounds great. Really nice to talk. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.